All right, so the first thing we're going to learn is engagement. Any idea when I say the word engagement, dog training? Any idea what I may mean? <laughs> Paying attention, okay. Anything else? Yes? Getting the dog focused on you. Getting dog focused on you, okay. Kind of the same way, this, 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 something else maybe. It's engagement. So engagement is... In it? In, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Exactly, exactly. If I go to... If I go to this dog here, and this dog's looking off over there at the cat, and I tell the dog, sit, 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 is it doing the dog any good? No. In fact, what is it inadvertently doing? Exactly. It's desensitizing. It's actually untraining the animal to say when you give it a command, yeah, you don't really have to listen to it the first time. Okay? So before you guys do anything with your dog, and training-wise, you're always going to start with a low engagement. When you guys came in here, your dogs were engaged. However, they're engaged with each other. And we want your dog to be engaged with you. So this is one of the most important things in the beginning stages that you can do with your dog is get them engaged with you. So how do we do that? Well, we do that with the rewards we brought and the food we brought. Okay? I'm going to use my friend here, Emily. She's in my last class, so she's going to... You might be a demo dog for me tonight. Okay, in a minute, Emily's going to be a demo dog for me. And basically what you're going to do is in a minute we're going to stand up. We're probably going to do it one at a time just because we have quite a few dogs in here. And basically, you're going to try to move backwards with your dog in front of you, and you're just going to simply feed your dog. Okay? However, what you don't want to do is just walk back and say, okay, here's a cookie, here's a cookie, here's a cookie. What you want to do is... What's your dog's name? Ella. Ella. Let's say I had Ella here. Hello. I would say, Ella, come on, Ella, and I'd really, I'd really get her energy. The more the dog barks at me, and the more the dog jumps on me, the more I know that she's engaged. Okay? However, we don't necessarily want to teach the dog to jump and bark at us, but what I was trying to get through is we want the dog's energy level to be with us. Okay? No. So, going back to what I first kind of talked about, at the end of each behavior, what do we do? We free, we free feed the dog. Okay? Engagement is, the, is a behavior. It's just like sitting here and down. Okay? We teach the dog that when we start doing it, that's the beginning. And then when we say free, it's the end of the day. Okay? So, Emily, you want to give me a quick demo? Okay, so Emily comes out, she has a handful of food. Good job. And then she says free. Good. So what did you kind of notice when Emily's dog went by Mr. Happy here? Do what? She kind of looked at her dog and said, ah, mom's, a little more, mom's a little more enjoyable. Okay? Okay? So now what Amber's going to do is she's going to show you a little, a little bit of why we're using Amber and how it's going to work. So, now you notice when Amber's dog got engaged, now your dogs are engaged, right? Okay? Because one, the energy level changed in the room. And it wasn't just some boring guy that to be taught. Now there was somebody that had some energy level because the voice moved around kind of quickly. The dog is happy and everybody kind of comes away. Okay? What Emily's going to do is she's going to do a little bit of engagement and then she's going to throw it down in there. Let's see how quick the dog down. Okay. So she does a little engagement. The dog's following her and then she does it down with the dog. Good. So now, she's going to free your dog. When you engage with your dog, you want to do this with a loose leash. It's much like his wife coming up to him, pinching his ear and giving him a hug at the same time. What would he think? Are you mad at me or do you want to hug me? Which one, right? Now, do you notice the difference between Ella already? What is she doing? Huge difference. 
She's not caring about this part over here. She's saying, Dad, what can I do for you? Now her mind is open to some learning here. So in the weeks to come, as she works on the floor and board, sit is going to be really easy for her because she's already, she's already kind of understanding the foundation. Plus, Mom and Dad's already done sit with her, I can tell. Good job. Do you tell her free, though? Feet. Don't worry about that. Just feet. Walk back feet. Walk back feet. Do I say free so don't have more food? Reload. Yeah, say free and free. reload. While you're, while you're still moving. Free. There you go. Reload. <laughs> okay. This brings up a really good, a, a really good um, a comment about food. The dog definitely likes this. However, she's dropped about 50% of it. Okay, so it's okay. You're doing good. Look how much you're not looking at the dog. Okay. So for her, she probably wants to use something that's a little easier to pull out. Um, it's a little bit easier to handle. Now, what do you notice with your dog? Cares about so this guy wins kudos. If you notice, he has a little treat bag on the side of his pouch. Really easy to get to. Plus, when he goes home, he won't forget food in his pocket. And his wife is like, what in the world is this? So. Um, anything. Whatever you have to do to get him down. And it's all about timing. What he doesn't realize is you just already look at him treat twice. Treat Come here. Treat boy. Zeus, come here, boy. Zeus. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, so you notice Zeus had to do three or four chews to get that down. And next time, take a hot dog in about half of that. Okay? If your hot dog, you want your hot dog's probably in about a nickel or a dime size. His or dollar size. Okay? I cook for regular treats and I just ordered them. And ordered them? Like that. that works. I think she really likes them. And every dog is a little different. This Doberman here, I'm sure, can eat a hot dog in 30 seconds. This dog does get out. It's a little bit smaller. It takes a little longer. Okay. Watch this. So he's not going to use the thing or anything. Give him a little extra leaf. Kneel down a little bit. And feed. What happens when he knelt down? The dog came to him. So sometimes we have to change the picture a little bit. If you're having difficulty standing and your dog's attention a little bit, start with kneeling down a little bit. So what he's going to do is he's going to feed a couple times here, and then he's going to stand up and try to walk back a little bit. So do you see a little bit of difference yet? Good. So in a minute when you say feed, I want you to say free and clap your hands a little bit and run away, okay? Free! Oh my god, good job. Okay, don't drop the leash though. You did really good. Any idea why I had him clap his hands and kind of act like a goof? It kind of marks the it marks the behavior of free. Um, you guys that have kids, your kids are playing in some sports and they just hit a home run. What do you do? You stand up and say, hey, way to go, let me Facebook you. No, you're like, stand up, you're yelling, all right, you did good, okay? Sometimes we, we have to do the same thing with the story animals, okay? We have to express, like, hey, you did really good. There's a reason why I'm really goofy and work with dogs, is because I'm goofy, okay? Because of my disability, I have to learn to use my energy level a little bit differently than you guys. So it's really, really important. Want to try this? All right. And we'll some food. Just feed her a little bit. So is he going to have any problem with engagement? Probably not. Okay. Well, what I am going to comment on, he's cheating a little bit. You notice his leash is tight the whole time, and there you go. We want to give the dog a choice. We want the dog to make a choice to, cut, to do this with us, not before. All right, you did really good, thank you. So let me ask you a question. Should we feed the dog when we say free? Yeah. It's an end 
of a behavior. It's end of a behavior, and it's a reward still. And they'll start learning, hey, I really want to get that word free. Okay. Want to try this? Yeah. All right. You talk to me, you can So what I really like that this young lady is doing is she realized that her dog's trying to go off to the side and change direction, so she changed direction, which is really nice. The more you kind of change direction, the more it's going to encourage your dog to kind of stay with you. You did really good. You did really good. So attention is the next thing we're going to kind of work on now. Get you kind of started tonight, and then next time we work on it, we'll, work, I'll, we'll go over it again. Attention and engagement is really almost the same thing, but not really the same thing. When we work on engagement, our dogs are more focused on our hands, not necessarily our face, correct? So you want to make sure before you really push this with the dog that you have some good engagement before you really jump into attention. So in the next two weeks, I encourage you to work on attention, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. However, if you don't have your dog's engagement, then don't push the attention a whole lot with them. Take it kind of slowly because what's going to happen is you're going to try to be working on attention. You're going to be frustrated because the dog's not giving it to you. Engagement comes before then. So, first thing it's going to do is a little engagement. Okay, like you did already. Dog's kind of still focused on the ground, so he can do a little bit more next time. Oh, there you go. Yeah, if there's 20 bucks on the ground, I'd stop and pick it up. Okay? So that's a really good point. When you work with your dog, if you drop a bunch of food, go away from that area. Because you don't want to have to conflict with the ground. Okay? So what he's going to do after he gets his dog engaged, he's going to do what he just did. He's going to show the dog a piece of food. It's immediately going to go to the side of his face. And he's going to feed the dog. But I do not want to get the dog a command yet. I'll tell you why. Feed. Okay, so again, feed. Okay, so while he's doing this, watch him while he does this. I mean, explain something else to you. Oh my gosh, she's so strong. She broke her belt. Do you have another one? Do you need one? Uh, Here, um, take your leash. Feed your dog. So, science tells us that we have 2.3 seconds in order to reward for a behavior for a dog to understand what it is they did that behavior for, or what they got the reward for to do that behavior, okay? So, if, the reason why I'm kind of telling you to see it's a little bit too slow. What's happening is the dog looked up and the food didn't come soon enough for his particular um, age and for the particular point where the dog is in his learning. So he needs to reward a little bit quicker. So if your dog does something good, don't wait 10 seconds to reward them because they're gonna have no idea what it is they did. They're just gonna think they got a free meal, okay? So remember, 2.3 seconds. Okay, the reason why I'm asking him not to put on command yet is I want your dogs to be able to do it three or four times consistently before we put it on command. Because right now the dog doesn't really know what it is they're doing that's getting the reward. Because the dog's right now sitting, the dog's panting, and the dog's scratching his leg. Dog really hasn't put the puzzle together yet. So if we put it on command yet, the dog's not gonna know what it is that we're gonna be asking the dog, okay? So, to be fair, I want you to hold that right up to your face. The dog's doing okay, but the problem is he's not holding it close enough to his face, and so the dog is gonna learn to focus on his hand. We want the dog to learn muscle memory. Muscle memory is basically like our muscles in our body. The more our mind does something repetitively, the more that gets programmed into our dog's head. Feet. Again, feet. Okay, so do you notice every time he feeds his dog, his dog immediately goes to the ground? Do you notice that? Okay. The reason being is, in doing this with his dog, he's dropped too many treats. And so inadvertently, he has taught a bad behavior. He has taught the dog that every time I feed you, I probably drop three or four other morsels and so she'd look to the ground. So if he has difficulty because his treat has to be small for the dog because it's a small dog, he might try some easy cheese in a can or like a spoonful of peanut butter, something that he's not gonna drop that he can, rep he can feed repetitively. Okay. Okay. 
Good job. Quick. You're a little bit too slow on the feet. Got to be right away. Good. All right. Good job. Three. Asking for a new behavior. Very Just going to do a little engagement. Okay? It's really important to the beginning stages that you guys feed right away. You don't ask a whole lot, but you feed more. As the dog does better, you're going to be able to cut that off. You're going to be able to cut down on the amount of food. Right to your face. It's like, you know, you cut and feed again. And feed good again. Okay, I'm going to pick on you for me. Your dog is doing really good. No, you're doing great. You don't need to, you don't need to bend over. She's pretty tall and you're not very tall. And so, um, I know that this gentleman had to kind of get down to dog's level. That's just because of size difference. If you don't have a really tall dog and you're not really tall, do this from a standing position. Because pretty soon when we go back, when we work on healing, you're not going to want to bend over the whole time you walk with your dog, right? We want to teach the dog when they're standing to look up at a So at the point that she can do this five or six times in a row, and the dog looks up at her face consistently, then she can start putting the command to it. So at that point, that she, would, that she would ask the dog to watch. And the watch would come when the, when the hand goes to the face, and the dog's head comes up and looks at her face. Okay? So this is what it looked like. Okay, do me When I tell you to tell, say watch, say watch. Okay? Okay, Show the food. Read your watch. Watch. Good. And feed. Watch. Again. Watch. And feed. <laughs> and release. So why did I have her tell her to release her dog? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. So she had to go reload. If you have to reload, what is your dog going to learn really quickly? Oh, they're out of food. So then the dog is going to break the behavior because they just realize that any time that you go and dig in your pocket, you must be out of reward, so hey, I want to check out and I want to look at that dog. However, if you free your dog, move a little bit while you're reloading, you're going to be able to keep your dog engaged. Okay. You did really well. Did you see your dog start to learn there? Yes. Good job. So, this is something that you guys can do a lot with your dog and it doesn't get too tiring because basically your dog is sitting there looking at you getting free fed. I mean, heck, if I, my buddy here, he just sat on the couch and I sat there and Gave him $20 every couple minutes. I mean, he'd probably stare at me all night, okay? <laughs> kind of the same thing.